I don't know. Hi, everybody. Um, my name's David. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Candies. Um, thanks for having me this evening. So, um, this talk, um, I need a bulk. This talk is a departure from some of my other talks, which are more like rage submissions. It's like, oh, it's really annoying. It couldn't do a talk on it because it came out of a list. Um, like, oh, I was very happy about something. But then um, when I was trying to formulate I don't know, how to explain what I was happy about, I realized that I mean, it was more about the context of things I've tried, uh, about why dashboards were something which I was getting excited about um, at this moment in my career over uh, other points. And so I tried to formulate it with a bit of coding it towards the end, but something that you could take away, hopefully, and try per per in your own organizations, um, but then framed it around the, the word of problem I've been seeing in the, well, let's be honest, it's, it's just huge dysfunction, isn't there, in the software planning and execution process, um, all the summary about how he's, he was asked to quote for building it against an API that has doesn't yet exist. Pentacle, I don't know. You should do so we bought. So yeah, we've got in six parts. Here's how you know how we're gonna run it. Um gonna recap what I mean by pros, so that wasn't altogether clear when I tried this in white. Um uh talk about something which I've noticed across a variety of organizations, not just Candide, but it is common in pretty much every organization we word for. Um tend organizational trick. Um correlate that to something which I meant um it's really done by a family therapist called Virginia Satya. Um, you would have seen this curve as a spectacle on Twitter and hot takes. Um, where that ends up, something called enterprise amnesia, um, and relating it to dashboards, how do you have dashboards can help you record searching defeat him a jewel have the past. Um, but shut up, is as bitter as it sounds. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about dashboards, um, but how to formulate them. Uh, it's going to be kind of a little bit of the Daily Mail style of lies, lies, everybody's statistics. And then we're going to make a dashboard. Um, so here we go. Right. The pros. Um, when I'm planning work, um, you tend to reach for different types of documentation. Um, the ones which I've mainly using in the present, and they have a lot of doing the years. I definitely worked for a kind of more waterfall Prince 2 type thing right at the start of my career in, in 2000 seven um but these days um there are three key things narratives um okrs and uh uh proposals um and some of you may, may be using them now i, I feel there's some ways back or when there's uh, any little your very sexy looking gray arrows um the mid to the ai was not accepting free new drives from the for this presentation um point of a narrative Amazon's narratives, as they kind of their narratives are about storytelling, they tell a story. Um, and the idea being is that you, you stop um, asking your audience to figure out from Sarsie you tell them very explicitly. So you, you shift the cognitive load onto yourself and say, this is the problem, this is how it goes, solve it. Uh, what do you think? And it's usually about getting buy-in. Um, and uh, it's usually about making a decision reasonably quickly too. Um, uh, a lot of kind of like the gatekeeping in, in the software space is around assumed knowledge. The point is often says they're about two to three pages long and they can be read cold. So you can go from zero to being on the same level as the person who works in to make a decision call, go along with them um, in that single document, being read cold. OKRs, okay, so you've got something that's working, you're scaling it, well done, you're in the 1% already. Um, the pans are per. The difficult, dif different problems arise then, like you've got lots of great ideas and unfortunately some of them are counteracting them classically is the, you know, you've got a team who's, who's going off for acquisition, you've got a team who's off for retention, what call to action do you put first, log in or sign up? Guess which team wants which? Um, so there's, it's about creating alignment across teams so you don't start cannibalizing your own audience by virtue of having uh, things that don't work well together. Um, there's a bit more to it than that. Um, there's also about tracking progress, and you know, there's the adage of those are about you know tracking how you're going to get somewhere that's not having measurable goals, and there's you know this whole this whole certification scene. That's how, that's how you know it's good. Um, what's going okay, in? It must have. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, objectives and key results. So objectives, where I'd like to get to key results, how we're going to get there. Um, yeah, I should have uh, de acronym for and the proposals. Um, so. Another piece, piece of prose that you use to um, get people on board, these usually write lots of these on a call at the start to or throughout um, a last piece of work or a large initiative. 
Um, and I find they're more about getting a buy-in from your team that you understand the risks um, and that you've thought about it. So spikes, investigations, as we translated to one of our colleagues earlier, um, they tend to result to proposals. Um, and these are all um, hard-fought documents, as in, um, yeah, uh, here's some of them that I've written. These are all of mine, I think, apart from the ones on the right side. Some of them are Mike, some of them are Bill, some of them are Lee's colleagues from the left there, too, like, super don't But, um, yeah, they, they, these are things I've agonized over in order to get people to uh, um, feed that, which is the hardest possible thing to do for um, anybody. Um, uh, but also just to um, gain alignment, gain um, traction to explain where we're going, how we're going to get there. Um, it's all got references in them, you know, they're like your dissertations in some of these documents and um, they've had a time to spend some of them. And I, I find it quite perturbing at times that um, all of that effort seems to somehow get lost, the thing that starts to trip, which I think they can go mixed it. Um, and this is the Satya, Virginia Satya change curve that you may have seen. Hands up if you have seen this kit before, if you know what I'm about to say. I thought I had I don't know, maybe I've been in one of those Twitter bubbles and you're still using Twitter. Yeah, that's <laughs> not, but I've been there, but if people just share it back and forth to each other over and over and over again. Um, well, the change panel okay, here is it's kind of like be more the pan, glad I'm kind of quickly referred to. Um, but ultimately, when you've, when you've written on that, all those probes, you've put all the alumni put time and effort into making things uh, easy to understand and uh, clear about how you're going to execute. Um, you start the project, and that's the, the left-hand side of this curve here. In this is right. The, the left-hand axis, which doesn't exist, um, is more about um, how everyone's feeling, morale from the line, how Paxi is tied. And usually when you start your project, new things, shiny, still good at me. So, um, uh, but then um, an inflection point occurs. And these tend to all have an eight, actually, um, using this model. So where you started it was called the status quo, or the late status quo. Um, and then you have uh, this thing called the foreign element, a ship, something, the unexpected orphans. Everyone's been there. It's like, all hands, I, th I thought that was an excellent. Um, or, uh, you know, there's a new architecture release, like, I don't know, Coppin, Chip UI, the phones. Um, uh, and some of the team members don't like it, or something like that, but you're going anyway. Then there's a morale drop that happens after it. Um, and that's called, I don't know, resistance that phase when you start getting down that curve. Um, ultimately, all change results in flux, and flux, depending on your disposition, is either what you, you live off or um, what you despise the most. Um, and you end up with this, this minimum called chaos, <laughs> which, like I say, not my words, Virginia, family therapist. Um, why is nothing working? Um, and there's a really strong temptation to go back the other way. Um, but at this point, you put in probably all of the hammered yards. Um, and this is why it's, it's, it's the reflection point and you've got to stick it through. Just kind of like the um, reason for the subtitle at the start of the slides, but just manipulate people to stay on track. Just, you know, hold on, don't switch companies. That's become a thing where it's a, it's a new one. That's it, like you see this dip and then all of a sudden everyone will leave you to it. And you need to go with the hiring. Um, but then you can start coming back at the other side and, and things start getting better. They call it integration. Um, and then finally, they realize, oh, yeah. Um, you might get here's a pain in the ass. <laughs> so we're sitting with thinking, what's it switch to like? I compose is a bit like React React is it obviously the industry leading React Native posts we are in candy. Um <laughs> so uh uh I I wish everyone copied us sooner, you know, so specs book. Um and, it, and at this point you end up with a new status quo. Or smugness. You know, you go to the you go to a talk and someone says that they've got hundred percent copy or hundred percent swift UI like well, you know, where were snap traps? Uh can with GID, I don't get that privilege. Um So focusing on this bit, the danger zone, if you keep getting that over and over and over again, um, this thing which I've made up and called Drift starts to become something else that's like got a different name too, since everything has names. Um, if this is called Enterprise Amnesia. When people stun a project, stop it. And they start a new one, and of course it doesn't go to one either, so they stop that one, and then they start a set project. But it's got, you know, it's got, it, maybe that one was done with a different kind of document. Um, I don't know how many times, Andy, I saw the, the stamp collecting thing in the Just Eat app being proposed, but I'm glad it's there now, 10 years later. Um, but, 
<laughs> but um, but yeah, these things are years apart, and these are re- this is really damaging to organisations because ultimately, um, disruptors by trusty um, become the disrupted. If you you have apps or agile or small that don't have those larger organisation uh, organisational difficulties, they'll say just the green disrupted. <laughs> but um, but also you start to wonder is this danger zone becoming you know, the idea and is the world a tool? Um, a bit slower moving. Um, so how weird does this relate to that? Let me check my notes. I hate it. <laughs> um, I think it's this bit. So last week, um, well, completely much was in the office, not many of us, but um, um, offices were bullies. <laughs> um, but I remember I, I, walk, I walked in through a very vivid memory um, and I saw three of this dashboard that Mike and I had built up on people's streets and like where um, I had to submit the talk about this. And all these people are using my dashboard. And sure enough, in my emails, uh, I'm not lying there, but it's fun to do, you know, so ridiculous, isn't it? But uh, yeah, there was an email about somebody else wanting to have access to it from one of our clients. I mean, I was like, hey, right, I can have to explain some of this stuff for them before they get more into the stick. But, but also, the, um, we built the dashboard to visualize the hard yards because we knew it was going to be a slog and we like to just check that all our stuff was working. Okay. And I'll show you if we have time at the end. No, we won't. At the end. Six minutes. Um, and uh, unbeknownst to me, um, it started to take off because it looked pretty, I think. I think it looked pretty. And it also demonstrated progress. Every day, they had a green number, which just showed well, where we wanted it to be green, the red, and where we didn't want it to be red. Um, and uh, where we wanted it to be red, sorry. <laughs> um, and we were building momentum. And things are going the right way. And always what happens at this point, I don't know if, if you feel the same way, and if you haven't, um, don't talk to me. You, you feel like you, you just want to, well, there's, there's an impetus to put it down and to do something else. It's, 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 it's we've done it, right? We've, 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 we'll move on. Uh, we'll, we'll try something else. Um, and ultimately, you never quite get to feel the benefits of finishing that thing. But this effect of building a dashboard, getting that dopamine hit, completion principle, which I'll come back to in a minute, Seem to be having an effect now. It keeps it keeps whatever project you started. It could be business objectives, a bit of commerce. It could be technology affected, a bit of commerce, and it keeps people in mind because it's something that they can measure. It's something they can hold on to. Um, and let's be honest, if, if everyone you know, wants to talk about data and what's changed and what's better, these things are concrete numbers so that they can see moving in the right direction. This is this is people's ideas of good um, because they did this. They started this initiative. And it keeps getting better and better and better. There will be diminishing with it, you know. But I need, you know, that open initiative is going to keep that curve going up. Um, but you're all a- approaching a new status quo, um, and that is um, ultimately um, the benefit of having a dashboard showing that, keeping it front and centre of people's minds, so that it does have the time uh, to, to flourish. And so you don't have to say, as I've written for myself here. If only Project X had been granted the allotted time, and Project Y would have been easy. And I think I've said that so many times over my career. Like, ah, oh, just with this all one, you know, one last tab that was bridging, comb, et cetera, et cetera. So, the written dashboards. What did this dashboard do? <laughs> Double jump at once. You can share something. What do you think it does? It's not a trick question. It shows you the migration to copy, I think. And it shows you a target. And this is this completion principle thing. Apparently, um, this is the reason why LinkedIn has that bar underneath it. Say, do you thought we become an all-star? You know, that little bar that goes to the bottom and you need to add more details. This is the praying on something called completion principle. There's also one of those about software, which I don't care about. I could pull my boot in a way. Um, but it's, it's about our need to, to finish things and to and to be good and to get you know, full pay, pay grades. Um, Another side effect of having this dashboard, not only does it show good progress, dopamine, great speed. What happened um, in the last 30 days? It was right in the Jamba code. <laughs> it, keep, it keeps your team on track. It provides observability in the same way as you're looking at your, how your users are, um, and are using your system. It provides observability almost internally in your team. But then what happened to make it go down again? Is that something that we need to retro? Is that a new starter? Is that something we're comfortable with? Planting cop in, let's be honest. Um, uh, so it's, it makes things very easy to understand. Um, here's an interesting picture. Um, I mentioned the Daily Mail at the start. 
Um, what app is more stable? That is. But the safe. <laughs> I've given the gear away. I've changed the axio on the left hand side. One says my 8.5, the other one says 90. But ultimately, I'm in control of this narrative because it's my dashboard. <laughs> So, <laughs> I know it's manipulation, but ultimately, lies, lies, and um, um, stability you know, is, is generally important, but it only really becomes like important and that, oh my God, we need to have like a stability spring, which is obviously a very large smell when things are really bad. And it's, it's up to us, the whole BW thing highlighted this as so that potentially is another keyboard on where we own our own code. So if we need help, um, and let's be honest, we're, we're quite bad at explaining something by a technical and how to know what value it's going to give to the business. Then you know, here's numbers in your favor to explain, oh no, we've had a bad week. <laughs> and then, you know, if it actually isn't a big deal, we've had a good week. Yeah. Here's the dashboard. Yeah, it's maybe a bit underhand, but it's something that I think um, we could put into our arsenal as um, software engineers in order to have me uh, better explain why we want something to prioritize in our favor and in what we are here um the other thing to mention is that um talking about cover band explaining things usually migrations usually using the call this technolo technology enhancements um we sometimes do things without um reporting our progress and say where is our business projected to our business with change provision work from x to y where we approve retention more on k to b if we're going to be carving out, you know, what seems to be non-user value-adding time to migrate to Swift UI and to do this, do that, do that, um, we also need some reporting metrics. Um, and as I'll show you in very 50 seconds to 20 minutes, uh, it very briefly um, is that um, we will uh, uh, be able to kind of like always get ahead of our BI counterparts by um, filling our own dashboards. So that's what I'm going to quickly show you. Um, Dashboards are full for me, at least that'd be something that Dave team did, but in the behave, um, I need to do an ETL script or I need to run it against production to do that. Um, uh, uh, whereas now there are a couple of tools that you can <laughs> get the disposal, all seem to be quite free. If you're just particularly if you're a Google house, um, I'm not sure if there's a Microsoft that he did in like that. Um, and it's involved some of the map script of the studio, uh, for pretty widgets. Okay. Down. Right. We're just going to just showing you the, uh, the the, the raw outcast, since that's going to be a bit more fun in there. Let's get the new master eye. She did it. Her hand. <laughs> Didn't expect this to be so hard to see. What's that with Craig out? That's fine. Keep his ears, it's real fun. <laughs> a classic transition the yeah with um insects we look at the try I'm, I'm just gonna leave. quick to the start off but that's so many day in yeah it is this is the free API, I think, secret. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is something, this is that script. So if you, if you go to Google Sheet, then up and you'll see other extensions, uh, I think, look at script. Um, and here, is, here I am uh, using the GraphQL API inspired by uh, uh, Scott's um, query of the uh, me set for what we've been doing over the years since the, the 11th one is, is last year. And I wanted to visualize um, the site that's going to be set in the dashboard. And so since I know how to call APIs, we probably will do. Um, I, it's a bit tricky to call the kind of craft rather GI, but um, you can just start writing arbitrary. Um, well, it's just JavaScript. I think it is only JavaScript, um, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, there's no SQL here. SQL's hard. Um, but, uh, often data, you can retrieve through API. You could, you could put big query type things in here too. Um, and this is me retrieving um, all of the past events and the number of people who attended. Um, and then did like a, a host top trumps um, down here, which is a very fancy reduced, um, which I can't read. I go 
producers I rank um, after, after I've written it once, I don't know how it works. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, in order to kind of like add a new sheet to a spreadsheet. So we're using a spreadsheet like a database. Um, would recommend doing this stuff for, you know, like your shareholder reporting because it is a spreadsheet, a good sheet, but if this is for your initiative, this is definitely something. You know, they ran the government COVID shit, hub <laughs> shit, but you can say. And so, you know, you're not going to hit the max rows. I can append to this every day with new data as it becomes available. I can not, uh, I can clear it down uh, neat afresh. Um, uh, and I did a little fun thing of trying to understand how the, how I can't scroll any further, but who's been changing at the hosts, as in like, who's been hosting to the system as model how that's been varying over the years. Um, and up on the side here, we're going to, you can make it like a proper ETL, like it was like a transform bit and it's, uh, and it's loading into the spreadsheet, but this is like a cron, so it's running every night. <laughs> So the one up. Um, this is like integration with secrets. If you use like API keys and things, and this it can integrate with that kind of piece. Um, libraries you can make this available to other people. Um, you can debug it. It's actually a really friendly introduction. I overhear the conversation to you. Somebody introduced themselves as a uh, as an indie developer with writing Google App Script. Who is that? Uh, or Google software? When they're gone. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's 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 like debugging tools that are really quite friendly to use, giving you nice access. Outputs. And and that then that's um very much my mouth second on the ramp. Ah there. Oh, no. <laughs> this is not where I thought my time would be. Um is <laughs> right, control time before the wind. Right. Seek could be where it goes. So it all gets done to the spreadsheet. So what was that we typical of Tom to Tom then suck up or go it. Um, chat about what we want to be when we grow up, uh, she says. So it's just better there, just put it in a um, path and kind of switch it. Um, and, uh, and here's some data about that, you know, I'm to, from making an API call and putting it in a spreadsheet. I made like, I, I, okay, and it's not pretty. I'll give it that. Yeah. I'm still lacking there. Um, <laughs> But um, here we can see um, the number of people who have been going to the Southwest Mobile since its inception through the free beta API. Um, and then, in fact, month, this is like a, a rolling average. So we've, we've topped out about 40, which is, I think, at the capacity of most venues. <laughs> um, uh, um, and you can see COVID in there. Um, here's this guy. Um, this is pulling, pulling, pulling all, all the legwork. You can see, um, see Carl coming online a little bit and a little bit further down in the host emission piece. Of cards you scroll, uh, it gives you a visualization in part feeling you want. You can do cross filtering, it, it, it's a full blown dashboard, um, and it's got limits I haven't found yet. Um, uh, but Pandy, you're down at number six. Um, I'm, I've got one, yeah, foot. Uh, <laughs> so that's ultimately the um, end result of using a dashboard in order to get to that slum and visualize progress. So you could do that with. Query in your GitHub repo of number of lines of number of TS files versus um, JS files if you're in the kind of or you know PT versus what the pan Java ones, um, and that will give you those those curves. And sometimes you see a bigger houses like deliver room and the sharing around where at forty percent, fifty percent. I just always wondered how they got that, how they did that so easily. They probably had a team to, but we can do it now. And um, for all that, so we can just about it. Um, uh, in trying up some of this content on some of the uh, some of the candy members that are on in, in uh, the day, um, and was informed about um, the, um, the 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 anti argument. <laughs> so apparently, um, having too many attachments is also a problem. Perhaps uh, companies. I'm not experienced that one yet, um, but it's symptomatic of a, a different type of issue. All the data, none of the insight. That that adage again of um, uh, April wanting dashboards, not. Oh, they don't have to do the analysis. So dashboards aren't in the place of the actual analysis. Hopefully that's been done at the narrative of the probe's level, since that's the, the point it probably should be. Um, but that's a, it, it's a very interesting perspective if you're having the opposite problem, you're thinking, oh my God, I still like dashboards. I'm not feeling any more dashboards. Um, uh, it's probably the lacking analysis. Um, so that's what, what I wanted to talk about um, and give you an, an insight into the last couple of weeks of seeing how other people would use our dashboards, and then do what I wanted them to do without me asking them. Um, <laughs> because who am I to say your numbers go to the right and numbers, bad numbers go down? 
Um, so yeah, dashboards. Hand froze. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah,